Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 438th episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today, we have something a little bit interesting. I originally interviewed Kyle for the CRM Sushi Podcast. Kyle is the founder of Customer Hub. Uh, it is a membership platform, integrates uh, quite nicely with Infusionsoft. Um, and I was going to ha- have him on separately for the sales podcast, but we ended up just talking about his story, how he started the company, how he did it with his brother, how they sold Infusionsoft, how they spun it back off. Uh, and before I knew it, it was really more of a um, it was more of an interview for the sales podcast. And so... I'm going to do a demo later of Customer Hub itself. I've used it since like 2013, if I remember correctly. Um, so, you know, we just switched it up. So, you and it's kind of interesting because I, you know, I welcome him to the sales podcast and I was like, oh no, the sales, your sushi podcast. So it turns out my gut instinct was right. This is an interview for the sales podcast. Uh, you know, but we got into how did he launch? Uh, he launched during 2008, which, as you know, was another downturn in the economy. So uh, if you're going through some tough times now with this COVID-19, maybe it's the time to launch something. I was I was laying the groundwork for the Sales Whisperer in late 06, and I was laid off on my birthday in 07, which is April. I just turned 50. Actually, this is my first podcast. It's my first, yeah, this is my first uh, release since my turning uh 50. So how about them apples? But I had laid the groundwork and I was, you know, with a big family. And um, at the time in, uh, in 07, I got to do my math with seven kids. Actually, yeah, we were, mm, we were, we were, well, we were probably pregnant and didn't know it yet with uh, Ella, our sixth. Uh, I know Mary Claire turned three in the hospital in October. And um, so, you know, we do the math. Yep, she was pregnant. And um, it it compelled me, it catapulted me into just going full time with the Sales Whisperer. So if you're going through a tough time right now, um, you know, I hope you get some inspiration out of this. You know, Kyle's just a laid back dude. You'll hear it in his voice. Um, but he's he's a go getter. Okay, don't let his laid back style uh, make you think he's not getting after it. Uh, he would get into the role of, you know, your faith and, and, you know, talks about this being a spiritual decision as much as a business decision. Um, why he got into the space, you know, working with his brother, how that helped. And um, so I think you'll get a lot out of it and, um, and just realize, you know, we have all had some type of setback. This is, it's unique in that so many millions are going through this simultaneously, Um, but we will get through it and you got to just lean into this and make things happen. Okay. So I hope you get some inspiration out of this. If you need to bounce some ideas around, come join us in the free group, the implementors.com. If you need a little bit more help, still affordable, uh, 30 day sales growth.com. Um, use promo code April. I'm doing a 50% off during April. Uh, try to help folks. And that's on the month to month or even the annual. So it's up to you, but, um, it's super affordable. And, you know, I answered questions. I'm active online. You know, I've, I've been a really low key kind of lifestyle, living that lifestyle for a while. Uh, I like being home with my seven kids, although my oldest is now up in San Francisco, but uh, even with homeschooling, even with the barking dog, you know, I've been doing jujitsu now three years and I mean, I train five and six days a week and I don't know, I've, um, I like being kind of close to home. So this whole coronavirus thing, it's, it shifted us a little bit, but it, um, we kind of rolled right into it, you know, so I'm, uh, I'm happy to help if you're having a tough time through this, uh, because it's easier for me, just coincidentally, the way things had lined up, you know, I've, uh, a year ago, my wife and I started doing intermittent fasting I recommend you look into it. That's kept us, uh, from putting on a lot of weight, uh, while we're home. It's, uh, just today, I actually did a 22 hour fast. Uh, I didn't eat till about three forty-five in the afternoon and, um, you know, had some calls. I went for a run midday. 
Um, I'll do a, a workout tonight. We're doing jujitsu actually online. It's kind of interesting. So I'm just going to go through the drills with the guys and the gals. Uh, but that's been kind of cool, you know, in a different sort of way. But, um, you know, we've homeschooled for 12 years. I've worked from home since really for 20 years. And uh, for myself, we're 12. So if, you, if you're stuck on some things, if you're overwhelmed, you know, hit us up, uh, theimplementors.com. And uh, like I said, I'll do what I can to help you, you know, get through this. All right. So when you hear the different intro, uh, it'll say Customer Hub and uh, and the CRM Sushi Podcast. But you're in the right place. It's the Sales Podcast. So let's bring on Kyle. Kyle Levitt, founder, then VP, then re-founder again of Customer Hub. Man, welcome to the Sales. Well, not the Sales Podcast. You know, I do that every now and then. The CRM Sushi Podcast, man. How the heck are you? <laughs> I'm doing awesome, Wes. Thanks for having me. It's uh, awesome to be here. And, you know, we're in, we're in some crazy times right now in the world with all the COVID-19 stuff going on. But um, here we are running our businesses. Plowing away and, anyway. Huh? Plowing through. Just Love moving it. ahead. We're in a bunker, man. As you can tell, the, the sun isn't even shining. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So, Customer Hub, dude, I remember I remember before Infusionsoft bought you and before they spun you back off. I remember checking it out, and I got to admit, I didn't know what the heck to do. I was like, membership site, knowledge base, and man, fast forward now, I don't even know. When did you first start? customer hub yeah it was in 2009 when we um when we really deployed it and started making our first sales so you know we're talking over 10 years ago now and back then like i didn't even know what a membership site was to be honest um we built it as an add-on to infusionsoft so that customers could come in and manage their accounts um without having to call someone on the phone and then we had a bunch of people start signing up for it and asking us for other things and other capabilities. And lo and behold, a year later, we had built a, a secure login for clients to consume content. And this whole you know, membership site world began to open up and become more, more relevant and more prevalent. And right. So it's been a, yeah, it's been a fun journey. And, and a, like you said, a 10 year journey, um, 10 plus years, both running our own businesses as well as being a part of the Infusionsoft journey for quite a while. And it's been, been a ton of fun. Yeah. And were you uh, like a coder or developer by trade? I mean, how did you, how did you get a start? Yeah, no, not at all. I, I actually, initially started my career out in sales. Um, I was a, you know, mini wannabe sales whisperer like you, but, um, <laughs> Hey, I'm not a wannabe. Okay. <laughs> I'm the, no, I was what? the mini wannabe. I was a wannabe. <laughs> I was a West wannabe. No. So I actually started selling software back in the day and was hired on at infusion CRM. No infusion software and consulting was what it was called back in 2000. And yeah. Five. Yeah. I was hired in 2005. It was 15 guys in a stinky office over behind uh, In and Out Burger, and and we. Uh, I was I was the first full time sales representative for Infusion Software and Consulting. Wow! I didn't, and I didn't totally, know that. you know, totally not not aware of like a lot of online marketing stuff. But like I started talking to these info marketers and infopreneurs on the phone every day, selling the software to them. And like over the course of a few years, I just learned a ton about entrepreneurship, small business. Um, you know, I, I kind of came up through the ranks at Infusionsoft pretty quickly and became a, a director over there. And I was the director of sales when I left in 2008 to start a business with my brother, Nate. He's He's the coder. So we built the we built a, a consulting business together um, first to kind of pay the bills, and then we built Customer Hub on top of that, and and that's when our journey into our own software business began. 
Very cool. Yeah. So it was, um, so you, you built it to integrate, you know, and enhance Infusionsoft, but then they acquired you, right? When was that? Yeah. So we sold the business in 2011. Um, and, you know, we grew pretty rapidly from 2009 when we launched to the end of 2011. It was about two and a half years, uh, all, all said and done. And they were looking to expand their offerings to their customer base. And they saw what we were doing as a really nice complement to and a way to further help their customers and um, provide more value and, and obviously increase their revenues. And um, that it was a great fit for us at the time and where we were at in our lives and what we were looking to do. Uh, so that brought us back to Infusionsoft as employees. I came back into the product organization at that time and became uh, the VP of product over a couple year time frame. Um, and was back there for, I think it was about five, five years before we left again in um, 2017, 18. I, I can't even remember anymore, but a couple of years ago, we left and started our own business again. <laughs> gotcha. So in 2008, was it before everything was melting down? Uh, and like, did you regret going out on your own or was it still good timing? Yeah, no, it was, it was amazing timing because, and honestly, like when people talk about the meltdown, it, it doesn't, I don't have the same sort of response that other people do. It, it didn't really even occur to me to be impacting my life a whole lot other than like, you know, my mortgage went down, like the, the, the value of my, my real estate and home went way down, but like I wasn't selling, so that didn't bug me in. Um, owning a business during that time, uh, I think it provided a lot of flexibility and, and um, just gave us a lot of control over our, our success. And we had a lot of success through those years that made it such that, <laughs> that personally I didn't feel that negative impact the same way a lot of people describe it. So it was, it was really good timing for us. Um. Why? I mean, was it luck? Were you right place, right time? Did you have good connections? Did you have a great product? You know, because right now, I mean, the, things are melting, right? Yeah. And um, some people may be forced. I was, I was laid off, man. I, and when I started the Sales Whisperer, I mean, I was laying the foundation for it. I was going to resign anyway, you know, but I was sticking around as long as I could. I was making good money at my day job. Uh, and the company they we were struggling and I was in a bunch of startups. I was laid off so many times. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I didn't see eye to eye with our manager. So he and I had screaming matches all the time, you know, and, <laughs> but I was kind of kicked out. Uh, but I had laid the groundwork. You know, there's a lot of people right now that are going to be kicked out. I mean, people are already getting laid off, you know, and we're a week into this whole COVID thing. So what, you know, what was there a secret to your success? Again, was it, was it good, a good product? Was it good timing? What was it? Yeah, I think it was a combination, honestly. I mean, I'd love to tell you that um, I'm so smart that I had it all figured out and I knew where to be and when to be there, but, but even if you that, did, I, I would <laughs> edit all that out of this interview. So, you know, just, <laughs> a lot uh, of that was just luck, man, <laughs> being in the right place at the right time. But, um, you know, every challenge brings an opportunity with it. Like, if you think about what's going on right now with, with COVID-19, um, and I blogged about this the other day, like physical movie theaters and physical businesses, but let's just take the movie industry, for example. Like, Harkins is, you know, they're, they're having a major downfall right now. They're, they're closing down and like, people aren't going to the movies because of social distancing and quarantine and other stuff that's going on. That's in the movie industry, but Netflix and Amazon are killing it right now. And like engagement is off the charts. Everyone's at home, like consuming movies by via the internet and streaming. And so, you know, it, it's a challenge for most businesses and most people, but 
particularly those that rely on a physical presence and an in-person interaction with their customers. They're the ones that are really getting, getting destroyed financially right now by the whole COVID thing. But for other businesses, it's, it's, um, it's representing a huge opportunity. Amazon just is in the process. They just announced that they're hiring a thousand employees, thousand new employees right now to help with demand. Mm -hmm. And they're only, selling from what I hear, like the essentials right now on Amazon. So right. it's like for them and for other businesses that are set up well for digital business and digital exchange, like wonderful opportunity and, and like they're going to do transact a lot of business right now. So I think there's an element of that that was at play for us back in 2008, 9, 10, 11, when we were building our business the first time is, um, what we were doing and the way we were doing it wasn't negatively impacted a ton by the, the changes in the market that were occurring. And another thing on top of that that I would mention is specialization. Um, when you're a specialist and you're specializing and you have a niche market that you're focused on, it really changes the game in terms of competition and and you're you're less impacted by the market and fluctuations in the market and also competition because you're so specialized and that was definitely the case for us as well so when you launched um did did you build it on the side so you were ready to sell right away did you just save up all your nickels and and coke cans and bottles so you had something to you know go get a little extra cash you know on the side get, get money out of the sofa and you know, the cushions, you know, or like, how did you, how long from the time you walked away from your day job, did you start making money in your new venture? Yeah, it was, it was uh, a couple months into it that we were making money. It wasn't from selling the software. Um, we did what we knew we could generate money at right away, which was we did Infusionsoft consulting. And so we started a little service business and um, we started acquiring clients to, to do Infusionsoft and other marketing implementation for them. That, that paid the bills and allowed us to keep food on the table while on the side we were building the software product. And we started off with a super minimum viable product that, again, we didn't even really intend to build a membership site or a, a knowledge commerce platform but it eventually turned into that. So we, we paid our bills with services and um, Nate was, you know, busy coding on the backside of things, building the foundation. So when you, all right. So when you left Infusionsoft, was it to start customer hub or was it just to start your own consulting business? And then customer hub grew out of that. We wanted to start a software business. We were clear on that. Um, but we knew that, you know, that's a long tail effort. And sometimes you don't get into revenues when you're building a software product for a year or two. It's not uncommon to be a couple of years. And so, yeah, we were clear that that's what we wanted to do. And, um, and we saw the, the consulting and the implementations as a way to, to so why, work in the why, meantime. Why leave a guaranteed job though? You know, why not stay in your corporate job and code nights and weekends? versus going out on your own and yeah. still having to code on nights and weekends? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I, I, you know, I would recommend most people who have a, a, a job that's providing stability, I would recommend that most people consider doing that, consider keeping their job and, and you know, using their twilight hours to get something off the ground. For us, there was a combination of factors, including some changes going on at Infusionsoft at the time, um, and some, some uh, situations with myself and my brother personally that made it what we felt the right time. We felt super inspired personally um, to do it. And it was a leap of faith. Like uh, we didn't know as we were leaving where our paychecks were gonna be coming from in ensuing months, but we had prepared to give ourselves a little bit of a cushion there um, and enough time to figure it out. And we were confident and 
I think more than anything, it, it honestly boiled down to a, a probably more of a spiritual decision. Like we just knew in our bones that the timing was right. We were inspired about it and we, we took the leap of faith. Did, um, does it help? I guess you don't even know the, the difference though, but I mean, having family, having somebody, you know, some people are like, don't do business with family, Absolutely. you know, but you know, on the other hand, it's like, you know, him, you, you should be able to trust them. Right. Um, so do you, was it easier going with family you think than, than with a, just a friend? Yeah, that's a great question. I think every situation's different for Nate and I were about 18 months apart brothers we grew up doing everything together um, best buddies um, you know played sports together hung out together had mutual friends together uh, we love you know we love each other a ton and we respect each other and we have very complementary skill sets um, when I tell people that he's my business partner the first thing they ask it they, they like raise their eyebrows at me and they're like oh really well How's that like being a business partner with your brother? And I can tell that most of them are expecting me to like unleash a bunch of like <laughs> problems about it. And, and I've heard tons of stories about getting into business with family that are, that don't end well. Um, but for Nate and I, it's been amazing. We, we get along great. Uh, we work well together that, you know, business can be stressful at times. And we've, we've had our moments, you know, where someone pounds their fist down on the desk, but like at the end of the day, like we, we have a ton of trust uh, in each other and belief in each other. And it's been awesome for us. Um, we like being around each other. And so, you know, there's no one I'd rather be in business with um, than him. And it's, it's just worked for us. And I recognize that it doesn't work for everybody, but you know, we are intentional that like we're in the domain of business partnership in this conversation. And when we show up at Christmas dinners together, we're in the domain of being bros and family members and we'll talk business at times at, at those things, but we're, we're intentional about being in different domains of our lives when we're interacting on different things. And when we're working, we're, we're in the domain of business partnership. And when we're hanging out or going to a baseball game, we're in the domain of hanging out as brothers. And I think that mom, will you tell Kyle that a sans serif font is much better <laughs> now, Kyle, you know, uh, we've talked about this. Um, I think Times New Roman is really coming back in style. My, yeah, you can't have those conversations at Thanksgiving, huh? That would kind of suck. Yeah, if, if our arguments were about sans serif fonts, it would be a lot easier. But, you know, it does get <laughs> slightly more complex at times. <laughs> uh, come on now. So <clears throat> you've had this membership platform um, and, you know, for a while now. And a lot of people may not even know what that even means. So even still to this day, people may not know. You want to you wanna talk about that a little bit and we'll kind of delve into where you see this going? Yeah, absolutely. So um, membership sites is a term that has been used a lot um, over the past 10 years. And um, really at the end of the day, what a membership site really is, is it's a website that protects content and allows people access to um, protected or premium content. And so really the bigger picture of what we're up to is about enabling people to sell their expertise and specifically experts and influencers, people that have specialized knowledge that, um, you can't just go out there and Google it necess necessarily. They, they have experience, they have knowledge. They've a lot of times built up tribes of people that trust them and listen to them. And they're looking for ways to monetize their expertise. Um, and so that's what it's about is enabling people to sell that expertise. And sometimes they do it via a membership 
uh, model where they, they, you know, create a bunch of content and then they put that content up on a website and then they sell sort of an all access to it membership. That's typically the membership model, but other times it's, Hey, I'm going to create a training course or a training video and I just want to sell that as a digital product. And so I'm going to go create it and I'm going to sell that product. And all I need to do is give people access to that digital product. And we call all of that stuff, all of the selling of that expertise, we call it knowledge commerce. That, that's the industry that we're in and that's what we're about. And it's about helping these experts and influencers um, make more money than they can make trading dollars for their time or trading their time for dollars. Um, it's about helping them create a bigger impact in the world. You know, like Wes, you can reach millions and millions of people online and you know, the, the yoga instructor down the street, she can only reach if she's only selling via her studio, she can only reach people within a 10 mile radius. So yet the yoga instructor down the street is a, is an expert and, and an influencer and she could drastically multiply her impact by going online with some of her offerings and then creating a much more scalable business. And, um, well, at the end what of the day, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Well, so why not just have like a private or an unlisted video on YouTube or a Facebook group and just only paid members can go and I just upload my videos there? Yeah, that's a great question. And a lot of people are doing that. The challenge with that is really that um, you are at the mercies of those providers and those platforms. And so YouTube... Um, has algorithms and, and a whole bunch of science built into how they allow you to monetize and make money. And, um, and that could change at any point in time. And it's, and it can sometimes be a challenge to make a lot of money on those platforms. You have to have thousands and thousands and thousands potentially of, of followers before you really start generating a lot of money. Uh, through some of their ad, you know, ad ways to sell uh, via the ads and stuff like that. Now there are other ways to sell on those platforms, but ultimately customer hub and platforms like customer hub are about putting more of the control into the hands of the business owner, giving them more control over how they're going to deliver it, how they're going to charge for it and what the experience is going to be like for their customers. Yeah. Cause you, you see it all the time. The, the number one earner on YouTube in 2019 was that young kid. I forget his name, but like something like $23 million a year. And YouTube said, yeah, we're done with that. We're not, we, you know, we feel like it's targeting kids and they just closed the channel. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, so that's a great example of so where. You don't own those platforms, people. That's right. You know, no, that's right. oh, I don't want to spend forty nine or seventy nine dollars a month. Yeah, okay, just you're gonna let just trust trust YouTube. Yeah, right. and if you have a problem, just call them. Yeah, they, you you can call the owner of YouTube. <laughs> just, I got a cell phone. He's on the phone right now. I mean, yeah, just you can totally reach him. Right. So not. Uh, yeah, you, you ever try to appeal something on Facebook? Yeah, let me know how that goes. Right. Yeah. Um, so cool, man. Yeah, you gotta. You got to own your stuff. I've always told people, you know, you own your website, right? You own your database. Even, yeah, technically you're renting, right? You're leasing your Infusionsoft or HubSpot account or whatever, but you can export all of your contacts at any time. You can print them, you know, a good old piece of paper. Yes. And, you know, you have their address. You can drive over and give them a hug. You know, you can call them. You can send them an email separately. You own it. You don't own Facebook. You don't own your private group. Correct. So, all right. Off my, off my soapbox. No, so, I uh, where are things headed now, man? Well, um, really what, what's driving us is allowing um, people to, like I mentioned earlier, kind of 
be liberated from the time for money game that most of them are playing. Um, get up online easy and fast. And to be able to scale their business and achieve more success without necessarily sacrificing the lifestyle they want. So right now, we are an Infusionsoft integrated platform only. And we're building the, the knowledge commerce platform of the, of, of the future. Um, and we're, we're on schedule to deploy that this summer. And what that will do is essentially open the platform up to any small business owners, any experts and influencers, regardless of the platform that they're on. We'll have a, a Zapier integration that'll allow them to, uh, you know, kind of um, latch into certain parts of their funnel uh, to ensure that members or, or users or their customers are being granted access to the right stuff. And it will, it will um, also dramatically simplify the process. So right now in the, in the range of like, it's super easy for me to um, get up online and I can do it fast and like it's really hard and it takes a long time and costs a lot of money. Customer Hub is closer to this. It's an easier platform in the world of knowledge, commerce and membership sites, but we believe it needs to get significantly easier. The whole industry. Um, we want for people like you, Wes, and others to be able to be self-sufficient in operating their knowledge businesses if they want to, to not be forced to go hire a, a, a consultant and spend 15 grand on implementation before they find out that like their idea actually doesn't sell. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we want to get them up online and launched within like a few hours. Right. And so yeah, but don't now, don't I have to go into the studio and get my hair done and my extensions and maybe a little Botox and perfect lighting and <laughs> I need a fog machine, don't I? And and a, a two hundred trillion uh, megapixel uh, camera and A B and C shots and slow motion before I can really go live. And on top of that, Wes, you need sequentially delivered content. You need progress tracking of all of your modules. Gamification. You a professional design that looks like you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on it and you need, you know, just keep going on and on and on. And yep. no, so, you, don't, yep. you don't need any of that stuff. I have purchased digital products before that came delivered to me in a Word document. And all it was, was words on a page. And it was valuable because it's not the, the packaging that makes something valuable. It is the information and the knowledge and, and what it's providing in terms of value. And what I consumed in that Word document was extremely valuable to me and my business. Right. So yes, all of the bells and whistles and all the beauty can and will come and there's an appropriate time to add more and more features and more and more of that stuff to what you're doing. But that exact idea is what prevents most people from launching their ideas. They right. get stuck in trying to make it perfect. They're clear on the big vision that they want and they're, they're building the vision and so the analogy that I like to use to, to communicate that is like, if your vision is like a Land Rover and you, you have this awesome vision of a Land Rover that's gonna deliver someone from point A to point B in a super luxurious, nice way, what you shouldn't do is start building the chassis of the Land Rover and the body of the Land Rover and the engine of the Land Rover and do all of that over time. What you should do is get clear about the benefit you're delivering, which is transportation from point A to point B. Then you should find the quickest and easiest way to deliver that benefit or a part of that benefit as quickly as possible. And in this case, it would be building a skateboard. So build the skateboard first, sell the skateboard. You will have people that will buy the skateboard because it does provide value. It doesn't have AC. It's 
It's not as fast. It's not luxurious, but it will allow you to validate that the idea you have and the value uh, and benefits you're providing are something that people want. And then you can go on and build, you know, the, the bicycle after you've made some sales with the skateboard, then you can go on and build, you know, all the way up till one day you've built a, a Land Rover. But if you try well, to build it the Land Rover way first, you're going to be thousands of dollars in the hole and months down the road before you can ever even see if it, it's going to sell or work. Yeah. Or even, you know, like a, a similar, but different analogy, right? People think they've got to build this, you know, 100 foot long Hummer limousine with a hot tub in the back because they're going to, you know, the Academy Awards and they got to make a splash. The reality is you could be driving a beat up old rusted out pickup truck and somebody's sitting on the side of the road in the dark because their car broke down. They'll get in the back of your rusted truck with the chickens and the dogs right. in, the, in, the, in the cages, right? Because it beats sitting out on a lonely, dark, rainy road. Yes. You know, and you're going to get them from point A to point B quickly, you know, at least compared to what they were doing. And so put the info out. I, you know, I, I'll probably change the name of my course, 30 Day Sales Growth, but I've, I taught myself Customer Hub. I think it was 2012. It might've been 2013. Um, and it was over Christmas, you know, the, you know, that kind of downtime between Christmas and new years. Uh -huh. And I made 30 separate um, pages, right. With the, some bonus content. And I taught myself and I've always called it 30 day sales growth, even though now it's ongoing and I just, it's a membership site and I just coach people and, uh, you know, the name technically doesn't make sense, but all the content is still there. Uh, but, you know, at first it was $97 and I still give it away to clients as a bonus when they come in for consulting mm -hmm. or something else. But over time I raised the price because I put more content and, and there's more stuff in it now. Yeah. But get started. Right. Because right? it, it was a one time payment of 97 bucks because because it was new and it wasn't perfect. I remember I, I had it for a while and this dude, he starts peppering me with questions because I'm not like super anal about things, right? I'm a salesman first, entrepreneur second, mm -hmm. uh, co you know, coder third, right? Coder, <laughs> coder 103rd. Uh, and so, but you know, it was easy enough. I, I taught myself and I was like, why is he complaining blah, blah, blah. But seeing it from his eyes as an outsider looking in, because I knew the structure because I built it. Yeah. But I started getting feedback. It's like, oh, he's right, man. Like the menu wasn't good and it was hard to navigate, you know, but he, he liked the content mm -hmm. and he's still a client to this day, you know, yeah. but he was, he was hungry and he was willing to give me feedback. Mm -hmm. And so rather than, you know, get irritated and just block him. I was like, Oh, I see what you're saying, man. Now, anytime he sends me a message, which now isn't very often, I, I kind of got my stuff together now, but <laughs> you know, but I listen, right. Because it's a fresh perspective. So charge a little less if, you know, yes. if it's brand new, that's fine, you know, but tell people, Hey, this is a thousand dollar product, but it's in beta. So you can get in for a hundred bucks. You right. know, here, here's the deal. You get in early, you get in a low price. I need you to go through the content and give me feedback. And right. then, you know, we'll tweak it. So we both win. Okay, deal. And you'll get people jumping on it. Then you'll perfect it. Then you'll feel good about it. You can sell the heck out of it. Right. Yeah, no, I, I uh, absolutely. That's what we teach people. And, and Customer Hub is a product that uh, plays very well as a skateboard up to like a, you know, a, probably not a, you know, land cruiser. Like, you know, we don't, Tony Robbins doesn't use customer hub that have millions of members log into, but, but it does scale actually to very big businesses. We do have um, clients using customer hub that, that have, 10, 20, 30,000 members. One has like 250,000 members. So it is, it does scale. 
And honestly, it scales more than 95% of experts and influencers will ever need. But the cool thing about it is it, it just automatically generates your membership site and all of the assets that you need to have members log in, create their passwords, like consume the content, and it just makes it really easy. So you don't have to go do a WordPress imp you know, implementation or installation. You don't have to um, manage the plugins in your WordPress site when something breaks or when they do an update. And you don't have to worry about security when the, the rules of the game are changing in the world. Like we do all that stuff for you and it's, it's a managed service. Um, and so that's, that's why, um, that's why it's a great fit for people that are looking to get up online quickly and easily, uh, for low cost and low risk and also have something that, uh, does look nice. It is beautiful. Everything's mobile responsive out of the box with all of our new themes. And so, um, think of customer hub as like the perfect way to launch your skateboard in a weekend, uh, for this knowledge product that you want to sell and just get it up, start testing it, start iterating and building as you go. Yep. Amen. Well, I am linking to your site uh, and it's just customerhub.com, right? You've got a 14 day free trial. 30 day uh, free trial. Yep. Th oh, 30. Okay. My yep. bad. My bad. Uh, 30 day free trial. And I mean, you're active on the blog, right? I see something uh, from just yesterday, four ways mm -hmm. to take your business online, five steps to a profitable membership site, three reasons why 2020 is a year to start your membership business. All of these are very recent. Uh, so uh, keep more members. There you go. 14 ways to improve membership retention. Um, cool, man. And then uh, you've got some free reports, right? You've um, been updating and releasing. Yeah, we have a guide. Um, it's called Nearly Instant Profits. And it actually teaches people the details of what you and I have been talking about over the last 10 minutes about launching fast, launching quick, getting something live um, and out there into the hands of paying customers within 30 days. And basically, um, we take people through the exact step-by-step -step process of what to do, how to think about it in a way that will ensure you're um, more successful down the road. <clears throat> and it'll save you a lot of money and time in the, in the early days, especially. So that's called Nearly Instant Profits. And um, you actually don't see a link to that up on the site um, today. But um, I will make sure that we have a link up on the site um, tomorrow. So anyone who's watching this podcast. Well, you know, since this will go live tomorrow or the day after, then technically <laughs> it'll be live today or maybe even yesterday. But if they listen to it like in 2030, then it yeah, went live a yeah, decade ago. Point. Okay. Maybe I don't have to, I don't have to schedule that to do for another few weeks probably. But my point Oh, is, heck no. Give it to me now. We'll have that. We'll have that. Uh, that guide up. Dude, on I got cabin fever. I'm just sitting here producing podcasts all the time. <laughs> this thing's going out like in 18 minutes. So this will be a record. Yeah. So that's where I, that's where I'd recommend people to start if they're just dipping their toes into the water. If you have a little bit of experience with knowledge products or membership sites, then um, probably, probably not necessary. If you know exactly what you want to do and you have an idea, you can just get started with the free trial and, and get rolling. Well, look, man, as much as I love you, my daughter just snuck in. They brought me a chicken burrito from my, wow. favorite, from my favorite place. Amazing. So I got to go eat, man. You know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, man, for sure. All right. Well, this is cool, man. Yeah, I am linking to you. So customerhub.com. Um, and when we go live, I'll get the link from you. So by the time y'all listen to this, uh, that'll be live as well. Check out what Kyle's doing. Follow them on social media. Um, you know, what you see is what you get. I've known him a long time and, um, it's a good product and the vision though, where we're going, you've got to get on board, you know, the world, this is, we are resetting things right now with yeah. this whole COVID thing, right? People are, um, they're going to realize I wasn't so crazy. People are like, how come I don't see you at events and stuff? Like I go every now and then, right? It's like, I like being home, but you have seven kids and you homeschool your kids. Like, yep. I like them all. <laughs> I even love one or two of them, you know? <laughs> so the world's going to change. And so being able to be remote, 
create content, still engage with your customers, make them feel appreciated and valued. And, you know, uh, it's a huge reset. So I think once again, Kyle, you're on uh, the leading edge of something, you know, and uh, I think you're positioned well. So I look forward to seeing what you do. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Wes. Best wishes to you. Stay safe, stay, uh, stay healthy and best to you and your family in this, this challenging time. No sweat, man. Talk to you soon. All right, buddy. See it. I told you he was a laid back dude. So specialization helps you differentiate and grow. Uh, I love digging into how people made the transition, right? How do they put food on the table as they were making this? Because it's not always easy. You know, and a lot of times what you learn when you look under the hood, uh, people had a spouse making a lot of money on the side that uh, helped them, you know, dabble and jump into things. Right now is not the time to dabble. Okay, you got to make things happen. And even if your job is secure for the moment, you know, congratulations. Um, by all means, focus on that and make that work. But use any extra income you have to make sure you've got a safety plan in place. Because, you know, everybody's telling us this COVID-19, there's going to be a second peak, another wave that's going to be with us forever. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but there will always be shocks to the system. So get ready. Okay. Invest wisely, invest in yourself, uh, watch less movies, drink less booze, eat less junk food, exercise more, and focus on your business, even if it's on the side, okay? It's better to start from 10 or 20% than 0%, you know, as far as, insofar as having a, a side project, a side hustle going, Okay, it's better to have it 50% going. It's, you know, there's no reason you couldn't have things going 100% on the side um, with the right systems. By having your content, your expertise set aside, uh, documented, you know, the sales training that I provide, like when I first started learning um, Customer Hub, it was, like I said, I think it was December 2013. And I, I taught myself the software. You know, they were, they were purchased by uh, Infusionsoft. Then they created a licensing program. So as a partner, I could resell it. So I wanted to learn it. You know, I've always, if I recommend something, it's because I've tested it. And it's good. So over Christmas, you know, that kind of downtime, that week between, uh, you know, Christmas and New Year's. I think I may have started a little bit before then because things were kind of calm. That's nice. You work for yourself, right? You can, you can set your own pace. Um, so I just doubled down and I made 30 days, 30 separate lessons of content plus some bonuses and put it in there. And over the years, I have updated it a little bit, but because that content is literally timeless, I haven't, I haven't spent 10 hours on that in seven years. Okay. And having a, having it professionally hosted. Um, so Kyle and them, they do updates, they do security. Um, I don't have an issue with bandwidth. I don't get some huge surprise bill, you know, one month that I do a push. So when you make timeless content, um, man, you can, you can throw that in as a bonus. And that's what I did for a long time. I, I sold it at first for just 97 bucks. Then I would include it as a, uh, free bonus for people as a differentiator. So people would buy from me. Then I started raising the price on it. I add a little more, few more modules. Uh, I could give people more access to me. Um, they had an on-demand content. So you could watch it and learn at nights and weekends and whatever, then jump on weekly calls, but it became kind of a pillar, you know, foundational component of what I offer. And you can do the same thing and you should. People will pay you for your expertise. You just got to get after it. Got to start writing things out and documenting it. And, you know, if this COVID-19 hasn't given you a sense of urgency, I don't know what will. All right. But, hey, thanks for listening. I'm going to do a few more of these, start pushing them out. Uh, a couple of them are pretty close together. I'm working on a new format, like I mentioned. Probably go more of a, like, once a week kind of thing. But some more um, insight on some things that I've been pondering, some books that I'm reading. Some old, older books, things that maybe you haven't heard of, but books that have influenced me and give you some, some different insight on, you know, what makes me tick, but how you can apply that to differentiate yourself from the competition. So 
I'm working on that behind the scenes. All right. So you'll be seeing that. I may even change the name. I don't know. I don't know what I'd call it, though. The West Podcast. I don't know. Uh, it's still around sales and marketing and entrepreneurship and mindset. Um, so we'll see. I'm noodling that around. If you have any ideas, any input, let me know. You can tell me at theimplementors.com. You can hit my website and opt in and send me an email. Hit me up on Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I'm on all those places. The Instagram. All right. I love to hear from you. So just let me know. And uh, as always, please uh, share this, subscribe. I'll go sell something. 